Boker Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. There is a very serious situation going on in Afghanistan. Different reports coming out. Some of these have been released on Twitter as well as on news sources. Nothing in the mainstream media as of yet. Uh, our good friend Lorenzo had already happened, also putting out a call, sending us a private message that this definitely needs to get to mainstream media, uh, that we have U.S. soldiers that have been killed in a major firefight in Afghanistan. I want to start right now with uh, Lorenzo on his uh, page, Already Happened, Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan, uh, ISIS 2.0, question mark, and the latest developments in the country's north do need more media coverage. Several reports came out today about heavy clashes between U.S., Afghan, and Islamic Emirates of, uh, of Afghanistan forces in the country's north. Some of them confirmed by both sides. Uh, this is one uh, picture here showing the Islamic State working inside of Afghanistan. Uh, there has been a report, uh, according to the Taliban's official Al Imara News. Kunduz, July 18th, Al Imara News said as many as 34 U.S., as they call it, puppet military personnel have been killed in uh, Islamic Emirates uh, Mahadeen attacks over the last 24 hours in the country's north. Uh, now, also, I have uh, found on uh, Twitter under a man named Easy Mind. Afghanistan Taliban Kanduz killed one general, four U.S. soldiers, 14 more Afghan Murtadeen, and destroyed two vehicles. Uh, can't quite tell what type of vehicle is there in the photograph that he is showing there, but definitely there is something going on in North Afghanistan. We know that there has been more requests to send in more U.S. military troops uh, to deal with the insurgency that is going on there. Also, uh, Lorenzo shared another article from the MilitaryTimes.com that had just came out showing the Taliban with uh, the SCAR rifle, something that uh, U.S. Special Forces are known to use, including equipped with the most advanced laser sights for close combat for better accuracy. Also, they're seen with M4s, M16s, etc. Uh, so very concerning that the, all this U.S. military equipment that is in the hand of the Taliban, uh, that in the hand of ISIS as well, and you cannot help but wonder how did they get there in the first place, and now they're being used on U.S. soldiers. Uh, kind of have to rethink some of the, the, the thinking under the Obama administration when they were arming all these terrorists. Uh, and it doesn't end there either. I, I, I seen this article here posted today on Twitter by uh, Vanessa Bealey. I don't think she wrote the article, but it's clarityofsignal.com, name of the website. Numerous U.S. government officials caught on camera meeting with white helmets and FSA terrorist. Uh, now, of course, White Helmets is considered to be a terrorist organization by the Syrian government, and there has been numerous videos that have appeared showing them staging acts, falsifying information, including the little boy that was seen in the ambulance that the parents later said was used as a propaganda video by the White Helmets, and that there was no aerial bombardment by Russian or Syrian forces. It was actually a, a mortar shell of some sort that, that came in that caused the damage to the building, which injured this child and RT uh, and the Russian government. Uh, uh, Maria Zakharova has been trying to get CNN to recant their story uh, because the parents said that it was a fabrication. That's not yet coming. We see John McCain, though, pictured with the FSA terrorist group in Syria. Uh, we also see uh, uh, Miss Haley, uh, the spokesman for the United Nations, ambassador of the United Nations for the United States, meeting with the Free Syrian, excuse me, the uh, White Helmets. Uh, very troubling indeed, knowing the evidence that's out there about this group here, but yet they're funded by them. We see Hillary Clinton also uh, meeting with the White Helmets uh, and, uh, and, and hosting them at Georgetown University. Uh, well, kind of goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Jesuit University in the first place. Uh, moving right along as well, we also want to report the Turkish military has moved in. The sixth batch of Turkish forces has arrived at Qatar 
with a first and second, uh, two times artillery pieces of the T-155. Total number of soldiers deployed is 171. They seem to be making good on their promise. They're going to back up Qatar uh, in, in, in defiance to that of Saudi Arabia. Uh, but I kind of find it odd that Saudi Arabia is calling Qatar a terrorist group. As we brought out the other day, the ex-prime minister accusing not only Saudi Arabia, but the United States as well, heavily involved in supporting the terrorist groups inside. And of course, admitted Qatar is too, supporting these terrorist groups inside of Syria uh, from the very beginning to overthrow President Bashar al-Assad. Very disturbing information uh, indeed that is coming out of the Middle East there. Kind of a quick take of our broadcast today. Again, don't forget we are he headed to the U.S. here very soon. We'll be there for a couple of months there visiting and making our rounds, our first little conference there in Duluth, Georgia. We will be hosting other conferences and uh, maybe if we're up in your area, we might get to see you as well. We will be going across the United States, something we had not planned at the at this first start, but we are planning to go across the United States and trying to host little meetings there at hotels that we might be staying at there uh, just to try to be a blessing to all of you that support this work. and. We just want to have a chance to meet you as we travel across the United States there. So anyway, we love you. God bless you. Thank you for watching. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom. Don't forget to visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, and thank you for your help and support of this ministry. Shalom.